But the reptile shed is currently, uh, now that the summer is kind of over, we're going to go back to costing about a day to run this. What's happening guys? My name is Jamie, this is the Norwich Reptile Shed and in this video I'm going to be telling you about how I plan on dealing with the energy crisis coming up to winter and a few tips and tricks on how to help reduce your bills and hopefully keep on top of everything. Okay, first of all, let's talk about what is happening in the UK right now. Uh, for those who don't live in the UK, you might be interested to see what we're going through. And for those who do, this is the most up-to-date information. I actually waited until uh, our new Prime Minister um, had announced the uh, what's happening from October onwards. So the new Prime Minister has announced that uh, in response to people and businesses struggling to pay their fuel bills and uh, living crisis, cost of all that sort of stuff, that they're going to freeze the current energy bill, uh, the energy cap, um, at what its rate is now. So at the start of the year, we obviously saw that the energy bill can be, our energy bill can be up to £2,500 a year. Um, and we were going to then see from October that was going to be increased again, um, which was obviously very, very unsettling. Um, it's already tight during the summer, so um, it's gonna, it was going to get even worse. But that has been capped now, so the, our energy prices will stay the same for the time being. I don't know if they'll ever drop. Um, I'm hoping they do, because I think the cap, personally, I think the cap now is still too high for everybody. Um, we already are struggling with energy bills um, and just keeping them at this current rate um, isn't ideal. Um, it just means it's not gonna get any worse, except we haven't tried to heat our homes yet for the winter. So our energy bills are gonna go up because quite a lot of us haven't turned our gas boilers on yet for our radiators. Um, but anyway, that's a different story. So the first thing I'm going to talk about, um, and the biggest thing for saving electricity running these vivariums, is brumation. Now, brumation is something that I never used to do, I never used to think about, because I never used to breed snakes um, regularly, I never really was interested in brumation. Um, but it is something that I tried last year, um, and I called the entire reptile shed down, um, and... Uh, took the the stuff that isn't well wouldn't see a winter drop inside and then also tried to heat some of the vibs a little bit more and it turned out to be a bit of a nightmare um but it did prove to me that i've got quite a lot of species in this shed that can brumate um so that's obviously not all species can brumate and i'll quickly talk you through some that i can't brumate and that is my boigers i'm not going to I'm not going to brumate them. I, although they do see a drop in the wild, I really didn't enjoy watching them uh, brumate. Um, and my, what else have we got? Uh, the false water cobras. So obviously I've got Mrs. False Water Cobra in there. Um, and my boy is still waiting for another big vivarium. Uh, the Royal Python, uh, can't brumate them. Uh, and uh, yeah, there's a few things that I'm not going to brumate that they actually could. Uh, I probably won't, I won't brumate the leopard geckos because um, I'm not going to. And I'm not going to brumate uh, Rocky either. He's not going to brumate because he is potentially in his final year. I don't really, I'll talk to the camera. I don't really see the point in brumating him for his potential final year. As morbid as that sounds, that doesn't sound like you know, the greatest thing is to, you know, try and do that, ease him into it, and that'd be his last one. That sounds a bit pointless. 
Um, yeah, so uh, brumation is definitely something um, to be taken into consideration. And I'm going to do a whole video about how I'm going to brumate my animals. Um, and it's not, um, it's obviously not the easiest thing in the world to do. It's a daunting thing to do first time. Um, but I've done it once now with the snakes. I've obviously done it for a few years with my tortoise. Uh, but I've done it once with my snakes and I did find it quite easy to do. Um, and I noticed that the snakes didn't really react to it a lot anyway. Um, you know, quite a lot of the American species, definitely the pine snakes, uh, piggy, the hognose, uh, the corn snake, um, the, um, we've got uh, moose, Californian king snake. So they're all going to be uh, brumated. And what I'm going to do this year is put them in my loft so i'm going to board my loft out um, and i'm going to keep them in the loft and monitor the temperatures up there uh, and that's where they're going to stay and that means i can keep this whole room um, just ticking over um, so the vivs the individual vivs that need to run are still going to be running uh, and that is um, you know still going to save me quite a lot of money by not heating vivariums that i don't need to heat and maybe just a little bit of light just to keep the plants alive, the ones that have got living plants inside them. So obviously brumation is a big thing, um, and we're definitely gonna cover that on the channel, uh, but if we can't brumate, uh, I'm climbing up here, if we can't brumate our, uh, if our animals, um, another thing we could do is look at adding insulation above the enclosures, uh, just to try and, obviously these are just essentially just quite thin wooden boxes. These aren't particularly amazing at keeping heat in. Um, a standard vivarium really isn't very good um, at keeping the heat in. So um, a little bit of polystyrene, a little bit of um, insulation uh, material up there can help actually keep the heat in. I actually use this over winter just to stop because up here, have I switched it out to a, oh no, that's still a ceramic up there. Um, just to help keep the ambient temperature and I just didn't want it wasting away going up the, out the top of the vivarium. So uh, if you could get your hands on some cheap uh, insulation, um, maybe consider putting that over the top of the vivarium. That will help keep the heat inside the vivarium, um, which obviously will reduce the amount of time that the lamp is on. Now another thing that Arcadia um, are suggesting is obviously make sure we're using our thermostats and we've got our thermostats set correctly um, obviously right now it's towards the end of the day this bavarium has been up to temperature uh, it has been hot the heat lamp has been on but now it's no longer on which there we go it's no longer on this is actually Thai so she's actually one of the cooler snakes of all my snakes that I keep anyway um so yeah the, the the light isn't on which obviously isn't ideal we we would like some some of um, all these nice uh uva coming out of this lamp that is you know the a natural sunlight but uh there's no point in heating the vivarium when i'm not uh when i don't need to um especially during these times so make sure you've got a thermostat make sure it's set correctly uh, and also match your vivarium with the with the right size lamp. Um, so obviously I I use on my my reptiles that aren't as hot, Mr. Pine for example, uh, they've got the 60 or the 75 watt lamps in them. Um, for a bigger animal, you need to use a bigger lamp. But for maybe a, a corn snake, um, you know, hog nose snake, you could get away with. Uh, the 60 watt lamps or the um, 50 watt deep heat projectors um, so and they're not using as much power as a for instance a 100 watt heat lamp that is going to turn off in you know a couple of hours time because the thermostats told it to turn off so uh, yep that's another thing so another thing that might not be necessary like necessarily applicable to everyone but i'm doing it here and i'm just wasting power here um, so this is my lined day gecko i've got a, a, a quite a young lined day gecko in there i've got assassin bugs in there we've gone over these enclosures millions of times um, but i still run a 54 or is it 55 
a 54 watt UV tube across the entire length of this vivarium. I could use a 7 watt, um, 7 percent, I think it's 8 watt, an 8 watt tube, 7 percent on this vivarium, and it would be absolutely fine. But because I've been lazy uh, and I'm using what I've got, I'm using a 54 watt lamp, so I'm giving these guys UV. Um, you know, I'm essentially using the same UV, length of UV, that you would use in a six or seven foot enclosure just for this one here. Why am I doing that? So, uh, yeah, that's next on the list. And that's, I'm actually going to be featuring that in my next video. Uh, I'm going to be uh, changing the UV out on here and actually changing the plant lighting uh, as well as moving the UV in some of these enclosures after we saw what happened with the solar meter. Tune in for that one. That is my next video. So this is obviously one of the tools that I am going to be using in the reptile shed. Uh, this will save you money, but is a, more of an investment than a quick fix. Uh, with this tool, I can obviously measure the health of my UV lamps. Um, and I might not necessarily need to change my UV lamps as often as the manufacturers suggest uh, and also helps keep on top of things like, like Daisy's uh, UV lamp, for example, uh, that's not on for 12 months. Uh, that's not on all year round. I turn that off for three or four months of the year. So that, you know, that three or four months could save me from buying uh, a tube every 12 months when actually there's nothing wrong with it. So these do help, uh, although I would completely understand if you didn't want to buy one because they are very expensive. Um, but yeah, this is more of a future investment uh, and a really, really good tool to own if you ever had the chance to, uh, to do it. So next up, guys, I'm going to talk about sustainability and how we can be a little bit more self-sufficient, save ourselves a few more pennies um, during the winter. Uh, and that is with animals that we can feed insects to, it's super easy to supply our own food. Even if we just supplement our food every now and again with what we've you know, grown ourselves, just to help every now and again not buy that tub of crickets or that locusts. Um, and we can start with dubia cockroaches, really easy in a tub um, i've gone over dubia roaches before um, there's millions of videos on them but they are super super easy to keep um, and um, provide you know a lovely nutritious meal for all of our lizards um, and our insects and you know well invertebrates um, so yeah really handy to keep stuff that i also keep as well are um, fruit beetle grubs so i've got some fruit beetle um, in there and um, they're all full of them i've actually got that one in there which is purely for growing the grubs they, they just eat the scrap food currently in there actually if you see is a load of food from daisy so some dry food that daisy hasn't eaten goes straight in there and uh, they recycle that for me as well um, but walking over here i've also got uh, fruit beetles in here um, and this is kind of my fruit beetles There's quite a few dead ones in there actually but this is my fruit beetles and my um, wood louse um, as well as this one here are my I'm not gonna open that um, are my um, oh what am I trying to say these are my giant Madagascan hissing cockroaches uh, and I feed the smaller ones of these. I feed the, the babies. They can go in the assassin bugs. Um, the middle-aged ones, they can go with Rocky, Bearded Dragon, and a lot of lizards. So that's something. So I've got two different types of cockroaches, um, plus the grubs from the fruit beetles. So that really helps with limiting the amount of live food I need to buy. Um, and it helps obviously vary the diet as well. So, uh, you know, double whammy. 
So if it helps guys, um, I'm going to wrap this video up, but I'm going to quickly go over some facts and figures that um, I saw on Snakes and Adders and the Arcadia um, social media pages, just in case you missed those. Um, Arcadia have worked out that it's going to cost roughly on average um, £6 a week to um, keep one vivarium running. So obviously that doesn't sound like a high figure, but taking into consideration heating our homes, the cost of living going up, these things do add up. Um, and obviously the more reptiles we have, it seems to be quite an addictive hobby, uh, the more reptiles we have, the more that that's going to times. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's uh, unfortunately how it is. In this video, I'm not going to tell you though, it's the same as switching a kettle on because we shouldn't be living in a world, we shouldn't be living in a, in a country where we have to decide whether or not we can turn our kettle on or turn a bearded dragon vivarium on. It, it blows my mind that, you know, it's costing that much. Um, so I don't, I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to, not going to agree with that. Um, I just uh, hope that one day it's going to get better. It's going to get easier. It's going to get cheaper. Uh, and we can, uh, and hopefully reptiles in the UK don't suffer. Um, I don't, I hate seeing animals that are being dumped uh, irresponsibly. They're, if you have to give your animals away because you can't afford to keep them anymore, uh, there are avenues we can go down um, to uh, find homes for them rather than just dumping them in boxes or out in the wild, which is nuts. Um, and I will link a few down below in the description if you're watching this and it's something that you're thinking about. In terms of the reptile shed, if you're ever interested, um, obviously this is completely, uh, this is my hobby. Um, it doesn't earn me any money. I, I don't, I haven't bred any snakes in here. Um, I haven't bred snakes for years. Uh, reptiles don't earn me any money at all. YouTube doesn't owe me any money. I've got a few Patreons um, and I'm really, really grateful for that, for the support um, on Patreon. Um, but the reptile shed is currently, uh, now that the summer is kind of over, we're going to go back to costing about £8 a day to run this. Um, so that is why I'm going to be brumating a lot of my snakes. Uh, I'm going to cool the reptile room slightly and uh, reduce the amount of lighting hours. Uh, Things like leaving the house lights on. I don't leave the house lights on during the day. They're of no benefit except for some of the house plants that I've got growing outside of the vivariums. And to be honest, they can, that's the least of my worries at the moment. Um, so uh, yeah, brumation is the key at the moment. I will film a video about that. I've got a load of tubs that I have um, had to buy. Um, so it's all an expense, but it's less than eight pounds a day. Uh, when you add it all up. So uh, that's where I am at the moment with that. Um, and don't worry, reptile shed videos are still going to be out. I'm still going to be in here working on vivariums. I might not be building nothing massive at the moment because we're just trying to see what it's going to cost this year. But I'm still going to be upgrading uh, vivariums, building bits and uh, yeah, keep going. So I hope that helped guys. Sorry that's a bit of a rant video of me just going on about things like that. But I hope there's a couple of tips that uh, might help you uh, lower your bills and, you know, be able to uh, keep keep the reptiles going. And, you know, if you don't live in the UK, maybe give you an insight into currently what our situation is in the UK uh, in terms of the f uh, fuel crisis, um, energy crisis and whatever is going on. Uh, so thank you very much, guys. If you'd like to support my page... Uh, support the channel please uh, hit the like subscribe button and if you'd like to support it even further consider heading over to patreon where i can for three pounds a month feature your name at the start of all the videos so thank you very much and i'll catch you in the next video